Hey guys, it's Lee here from LE 3D Printing and today we're going to be reviewing and checking out the brand new TiVo Flash 3D printer. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so I have been waiting about a month or two for this printer to arrive. This is the brand new TiVo Flash 3D printer. I do believe this is the 98% built one. Um, I did not get the 50%. Uh, just to show you guys... Um, basically an easier video instead of having to pre-build it but maybe in the future I will um, get the 50% and do a whole video on that for you guys but we have the 98% built um, 3d printer right here and um, I actually just got it in the mail and I am super excited to open it but um, yeah so let's get right to unboxing um, first of all just looking at the box it is a simple um, TiVo box it didn't actually have those like red straps that the last two printers I unboxed from them came with um, just a normal box checking out what it says it says it is a 200 by 30 235 by 235 by 250 uh, millimeter build volume and that is about almost the size of the TiVo Tornado but not as tall as the TiVo Tornado um, the the layer resolution is 0.1 filaments you can use any ABS PLA flex um, flexible PLA, hips, wood, PVA, um, diameter is 1.75, um, nozzle that comes with stock is 0.4, um, the machine dimensions are 440 by 450 by uh, 495 millimeters, so the actual machine is a lot bigger than the actual print volume. The warranty is one year, which is new, I believe, on the TiVo um, printers I have not read that before on a box so maybe that is something new that they just put and the location is um, in China and yeah so this actually tells you what it comes with I'm pretty sure it comes with all of these because I did get the 98% and um, Alex over at the TiVo company he made sure I got all this stuff so it is a 220 volt I believe for me it has mute drivers um, it is the TMC 2100 it has a build touch and it has dual Z which is really awesome so I believe it is this is checked right here the dual Z plus um, build touch which is really cool so let's get right to unboxing this thing alright so I am in a different spot I have a new table in here just because the rest of my tables are completely full of other 3d printers so I'm um, opening it up for you guys uh, it's just a normal packaging like TiVo has um, there's lots of foam included in these packaging to make sure everything is um, shipped safely. So uh, just taking out just the easy parts are just all these little pieces of foam. As you can see, here's the extruder head. Um, I haven't actually checked on how to take this out the best way. So there is two layers of this. So I'm just going to take, I think I can just take the metal part out. Um, again, it is all very compact so I guess I'll just take this out first and as you guys can see down here um, on this side of the glass it is not cracked so we got to keep it that way and make sure nothing breaks so right here we have the first part and I believe I'm just gonna set it on the side here and uh, pull it out I think that's how how we can get it out oh there's also actually there's some um, the tools and packaging and stuff in here. We can check that out in a second. Dangerous. So this is the first top half. Um, I believe this is part A. And as you can see, I have the dual Z, which is great. Um, in other videos, I've seen uh, Joe over at uh, 3D Maker New. He had a little harder time with the 50% built uh, printer uh, getting these on. So I think, I'm not sure if he put them on, but during his live stream when he was building it, he did not because it was just way too hard. So that's the first part. Okay, so just looking at this out of the box, um, everything looks okay. Um, as you can see down here, there is no... Um, thumb screws on here as of now and that is what is in this little bag so that might be the first thing I'm going to do um, but also the base here if I take this off um, 
you can see it's really wiggly. So we're gonna have to fix that with some of the tools. So let's just take out the tools that we are going to need. Okay, so what I just did was I just used this tool that comes in uh, this just little baggie full of tools. And I um, tightened the eccentric nuts under here, uh, right under here. They're really easy. You just have to access it from the side. Uh, but now we're gonna open um, this bag and then we can put together the bed. Um, so should be super easy and this bed actually looks really nice right away um, I already do love the way that TiVo has made this uh, this base down here to hold the bed it is a super smart idea I like how it curves up like this and makes it definitely more stronger and uh, the material it's made out of is aluminum I believe or um, steel or something uh, but it also looks very nice so it should um, definitely show in the print quality. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is grab this other part of the printer, the part B, I believe, or part A, and um, it basically sets right at the back of the printer, but you have to get the screws and stuff out of one of the packets, so it basically sits here, but you need to get these screws out, and then um, I believe this tool. So you have to put them inside, in the sides, and I'll underneath, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so what I mean by the sides is, as you can see, this is where it meets. Um, so what you want to do is scoot your printer to the side, or to the edge of your table, and um, make sure you don't lose that. Uh, make sure nothing tips. And what you're going to do is, this goes straight into the bottom. There's two holes, you're going to have to look underneath. And then you screw this part in to the bottom. It's a little hard to line up, but once you move it, you can kind of see from the bottom um, on the or the sides. Once you move it and adjust it a little bit, you should just start be able to screw it in. And make sure you make it super tight so nothing tips over, and everything is nice and. Um, even so do this to both sides and there are little grooves this is like a little indentation where the printer will sit okay so I got the sides on it was a little uh, frustrating because when I put one side on and then tried to do the other there was like a gap between the base and this actual bar so you actually kind of have to like pull it a little bit to let it fit and it'll fit snugly um, I was just looking around the base and um, it's kind of weird that this LCD screen is actually open on the back. I'll show you guys in a little bit. but um, And then it's just a super thin metal, which I actually didn't expect because everything else is packed in the back and more secure. And this is kind of just open. Uh, but maybe that was just a cheaper way to go. Um, there's also one other thing I wanted to show you. It's actually this side. Um, if you can kind of see up here... This is the um, extruder wire motor, and as you can see, this is warped or bent. I'm not sure if that's how it was supposed to be or how it was made, but um, I will definitely check out on that to make sure um, it's not supposed to be like that or if it is supposed to be like that. But um, this is what mine looks like. Not sure if yours would look like this, but I just want to let you guys know. So what we need to do now is actually connect all the wires. Now there are wires um, hanging out everywhere, so... Uh, we can just read the little parts on here, and it'll tell you. So the X motor, they're kind of just tied in a knot, just to keep them a little cleaner. So let's see. This is the E motor, so the extruder motor. I'm actually going to move the, this is for, these are for the hot end. Um, and then this is um, the the Z, Z end stop, which has which there are some screws and stuff to mount that, so we'll mount that in a little bit. Um, back here is the Z. They're actually zip-tied together, I believe. Um, over here, there's the Z wire. And yeah, so they're just zip-tied to keep everything nice while shipping. Um, let's see, the Z wire just goes right to the Z axis. There it goes. These uh, plugins are kind of like acting like cheap, maybe. I'm um, not sure, so just make sure you don't break them, because um, if you have to replace them, it's kind of hard to replace, because these wires are all black, so if you get uh, a wire that has colors, it's a little different, 
it might act different. I had that problem before. Uh, but now looking back here, we need to do the hot end. So there's a smaller one and there's a larger one and they just go in the small and big holes. Um, so basically, find where it fits. There's a little notch in it. And then you just screw it in. So like this, screwed in. And there you go. So we can do this one. So this is actually the uh, the X end stop. I just remembered that there's no um, actual Z end stop like this because we do have the build touch, BL touch um, assembled on there. So I'm pretty sure if you do not have the BL touch, there would be another one of these. Um, I actually just figured that out. The Y end stop is already installed in the back. Um, but now we're just going to have to level the bed and um, install this really quick. So uh, let's go right to that. So the next thing to do um, before actually bed leveling is to turn on the printer. So um, it just comes with this short little cord and it plugs in in the back here. Just a normal uh, plug in. And make sure you push it in all the way so that there is full contact. And then you'll be able to turn it on and off with this little switch back here. Um, so let's go plug it in. Okay, so I got it plugged in and everything, so now it's time to turn it on. Alright, so just looking at the LCD screen, what I want to do, sorry about the, uh, the color, um, is what I want to do is, uh, go to shut off stepper motors. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can twist it to lower it down closer to the bed. Um, to start bed leveling. So um, as you can see over here, I did move the build touch or the um, sensor. Now I did put it in the wrong space. You do not need um, this little piece here. You just screw it in to the hole that is um, meant for it over here so that it is actually able to go all the way over to the side of the bed. So what you want to do um, is go on the home screen and uh, do the uh, bed leveling and it just basically goes around all four of the corners um, I'll show you guys really quick what that looks like. So just go to bed leveling and home me first So it's just gonna do this So um, make sure it works just like that and then what you can go to do is go to prepare and go down to uh, bed leveling and that'll do the whole entire um, perimeter and the inside of the bed, the build plate, and I'll just show you what that looks like here. So it does it nine times all the way around um, just to get basically a map of the entire build plate. Okay, so what you want to do to level the bed is uh, make sure there's about one fourth of the screw sticking out on the bottom of the beds and go down to your LCD screen and go to um, bed leveling and then go to home me first and it'll level and what you want to do next is go to main make sure you're uh, you just press the home button and then you go to prepare go to move access and go to home or uh, move Z and then you want to move down until you get to zero. Um, sorry, I went the wrong way. It'll go down. Um, so you want to get to zero and um, to see how far your nozzle is away from the bed. As you can see, um, I'll put my card under here. It's very easy to put this under here. So what you want to do next is you want to go into your LCD screen again and go to control and go to motion and you're going to see the Z offset setting and whatever that is mine is actually um, negative uh, 1.61 and what I want to change that to is because I have so much left or so much space I'm going to change that to negative uh, 1.71 and when you change this you're going to want to go to back to control and go down to store setting and you hear a little button that means it is uh, stored and what you want to do again is go to um, home me first again it'll do the same exact thing and what we're gonna do after that 
is we're going to go back to prepare it, go to move access, go to move Z, and start with 10, and move it down, or you're going to start with 1, sorry, you're going to start with move 1 millimeter and go down until you get to, to uh, 0 point whatever, and then go back to the screen, sorry, I should probably show you this, and you're going to go to move 0 0.1, and then you're going to move down until you get to zero. So now my nozzle is uh, to my bed, and it is actually um, the thickness of this, which it probably needs to be a little thinner, but I can um, change that, which I will go just back to my um, control, go back to control and to motion and Z offset, and I will change that to maybe uh, 74, just go down, uh, or 73, just go down two more millimeters, and don't forget to actually save and store your setting, and then we can go back to prepare and move down, and go down, and then it will actually um, be level. So um, that is how you level your bed. So now that we have the bed level, what we can do is um, go to prepare and we can go all the way down to preheat PLA and go to preheat. And this actually warms it up to 200 and the bed 70. So that'll warm up. I usually do my uh, PLA at 210. So I'm just gonna go to control temperature and nozzle and um, go to 210 and um, we can put in some PLA. So, because this did not come with a spool holder, which Tebow should start including in their printers, um, I just have a pre-printed spool holder and I'm going to put it up there for now. I'm not sure if I'll put one on the side or something, just because this is already a compact printer. I might just leave that up there, but uh, we're just going to feed it into the extruder down here, and then uh, we'll push it out the, the nozzle and see how that goes. So, if you've never used a Tebow 3D printer before, um, they have these Titan extruders, and these are actually really nice extruders. They're super easy to use. Now, what I should be doing is putting a PTFE tube in here, just a small one, uh, just so that the plastic doesn't wear away at this plastic. Um, but I do not have a piece right now, so I'm actually just going to feed it in there just regularly. But just to let you know, this plastic will rub against this uh, plastic part here, and it will wear it away. So you want to make sure you use a PTFE tube, but for this, um, I'm just going to leave it. So I'm just going to push it through. It is super easy. These are very nice um, extruders, and I definitely do really like them. So as you can see, um, Tivo actually tested this with some green filament, which actually looks pretty cool. But I'm just pushing the filament right through the nozzle. As you can see, it is a very clean nozzle, um, and it just comes right through just like that. So that means we have a clean purge no nozzle, and we can test out a little print. So one thing I definitely like about uh, their SD card thing now is when you put it in, it's not just like a slide in, it's a push in and it clicks like uh, you do on some computers and then um, then we can print from there and that makes it super easy. So to get it out you just push it. So it's just nice and compact. One thing I do want to note about this printer and all of TiVo's new printers um, like this one and the TiVo Michelangelo. They heat up super fast, as you can see right here. Um, they're really fast heaters and stuff. But also one thing is the um, SD card that comes with this printer is total trash. I mean, it might work for you, but that is like a 99.999% of not working because it is Chinese and it's fake. Um, so I actually had some problems with that. Um, not reading it in this so just get a different SD card. Alright guys welcome back So I've had this printer for almost two to three weeks by now um, And I have actually printed a lot of filament on it um, including uh, Hands and printing a lot of filament on there that I have been reviewing So this printer actually is probably one of my favorite printers um, I believe it's way better than the TiVo Tornado um, for me because that is a 2017 TiVo Tornado but honestly this TiVo Flash is probably one of my best working printers it is just works flawless once I got everything tuned in and the belts tightened and everything wow does this printer work great so because the glass bed is glass um, I had to use some hairspray on it to actually get the prints to stick 
Um, so just a little bit of hairspray and everything works great. Um, the, I've only sprayed it once with hairspray, so it's working pretty amazing. Um, and I actually did do um, one, this is the, I believe this is the time lapse test that you guys saw. Um, and as you can kind of see here, that is definitely not a circle on top and this should be circular. Um, so I figured that was the bed problem and when I looked at it, um, it looked more like it would be in the Y axis. So I tightened the Y uh, belts and after that I printed a smaller version but the same, um, same settings and everything and it was perfect. It is a perfect circle. You can definitely see if you look at the top of this, this is not circle how it's supposed to be and then this is definitely uh, what it should look like. So these were my two first test prints and then obviously I printed my maker coins on there um, and then all of this stuff right here. I printed a giant maker bot um, guy here and he actually moves so there is no um, elephant footing on the bottom here. As you can see this is very shiny. It went to the bed. It stuck great to the bed. So after these printed they stuck fine to the bed with the hairspray but once the bed cooled down they just came right off. It's like they weren't even sticking. Uh, but the bed um, sticks great and once you get it bed leveled everything is beautiful. The first layer is amazing. You can also use the baby steps on there to just get your first layer just perfect if you don't want to use the knobs. But again this turned out amazing. It still moves. Um, there is some overhangs down here and they did pretty good actually um, for having no support as you can see right there. Um, overhangs are great. And then I also printed this giant print right here. This is my iPad stand. I just showed you guys this in my IO Robotics filament review. And overall, this did great. I still am having some problems. As you can see, there's lots of layer lines. And then there's also some banding and stuff here, um, like a little bit of ghosting. But honestly, this didn't actually warp at all. So it printed like this. And um, because it is such a big print, I actually expected it to warp but it did not, it turned out perfect. Um, and as you can see, I have a color change here. So pausing the print uh, during the print um, without actually having it in the G code, you just go to pause print and it'll pause it. And then I switched out the color and I press resume print and it was perfect. I did actually move it, um, move the Z axis down a little bit with the baby steps um, just to make sure that there was no gap and it wouldn't break. But honestly, this looks great to me. You can't, you can't even feel where um, they change. These are both the same um, type of filament, so it changed from PLA to PLA. So um, I can actually, I might test um, PLA to ABS or PLA to Flex, something like that. But um, definitely try the color changing on there. You can make some cool prints with that. Uh, and yeah, so I know the build space isn't as big as the TiVo um, Tornado or the TiVo Michelangelo. It's kind of like in between. But it is honestly an amazing printer and I definitely 100% recommend it to you. There will be a link in the description below. Do not forget to go use that link if you're going to buy any TiVo printer. Um, it is an affiliate link for me so I can get a little bit of money back to help me with my channel and getting more printers and more filaments to show you guys. Um, so definitely do not forget to use that affiliate link down below to buy your printers. So I actually, like I said, I told you guys I printed some hands. I printed some fingers for um, this new arm that I actually printed. All these fingers were printed on the flash and I also used uh, these middle, the middle part of the fingers. Um, those were printed on a raft and um, the raft settings were great for me. The raft pop off right away. Um, everything was great. Support does amazing on there. Um, nothing pops off the bed as long as you have enough of hairspray on there. People also use glue stick, but for me, I just like hairspray on my glass bed. Um, it keeps everything still shiny and everything sticks great. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't super long, but I really hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's keep growing this channel and hit that like button to get this video out there so more people can see it. I know there isn't a lot of reviews on the TiVo Flash, so definitely go check this printer out. Again, don't forget to use my affiliate link down in the description. And um, yeah, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely go get this printer, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.